Women on Wealth is proudly sponsored by First for Women. Celebrating leading women. She was headhunted by Sir Ramaphosa to assist in running blue chip company Shanduka, a company that she is now the CEO of. This is Women on Wealth and I'm Nozi Pombanjo. Tonight we profile Shanduka Group CEO Puti Mahanyele, Hope Factory CEO Annie McWalter discusses how mentorship can drive the success of female entrepreneurs and in Power We Define we bring you business mogul Bastetana Kumalo. Puti Mahanyele is a young global leader who has taken on the dual challenge of driving entrepreneurship in South Africa and the national responsibility that comes with it. I sat down with her to find out why she gave up a lucrative job in the United States to return to South Africa. Well, this, it was a time when democracy was really being lived in South Africa in that we were having the new government being formed. Um, and so it, it was a time of, you know, I think great peace and happiness for, for many South Africans because we were having freedom for the first time. Um, and I wanted to be among South Africans here um, because one thing that I knew was that certainly we would see a change in the economy in terms of participation in the economy by black people. And I wanted to be amongst those people. Um, and, and so that, that was really the time for me. I was coming out of university and it, it was an opportune time to, mm. to be coming into South Africa. Has democracy delivered, uh, not only mm. for you, but mm. uh, for women broadly? I think certainly, you know, given the huge challenges that our democracy has had to face, I think that there's a lot that has been done. I think that what we we often don't look at is is the you know the the, the various challenges that the government has had to face, mm -hmm. you know, um, in in trying to deal with the various you know hardships that South Africans have faced for many years, um, be it in education, be it in public works, whatever area it is, um, they, there's been significant challenges that the government has faced, um, and I think that against those challenges a lot more has been done than what is actually brought to the service. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually, it's funny, I was, I was actually thinking just some time ago that, you know, I, I wish there would be more being said by government, by the work that they are doing, because a lot is being done and a lot has been done. Um, and, you know, as, as we now um, go forward, it's important for us to see what has already been delivered. You've always been seen as a champion for entrepreneurs and for education broadly. And as you speak now about the work that still needs to be done by government, if you could um, dictate to the government what the priorities in, especially in entrepreneurship and in education uh, should be, what would that be? Yeah, well, I think certainly we, we have, you know, the right focus now in terms of focuses on exactly that, on entrepreneurship and on, on education. Um, and in education, making sure that we have more education available for more people around the country. Because one of the problems that we had was that we had good education facilities, but being made available not for all South Africans. And, and that is now, it, it's now changed. Um, and, and also just making sure that we have funds being available for, for young people around South Africa. And then in terms of entrepreneurship, pushing that more. But I think the difficulty has also been in this being seen as a government, you know, a priority only. Right. When the private sector also has a big role to play in that, mm. in providing education as well as an entrepreneurship as well. Let's go back to the day you got the call from uh, now uh, Deputy President Ramaphosa to come and join this particular group. Yeah. What changed in your life since then? A significant amount has changed. <laughs> um, you know, working with the now Deputy President, um, you know, working with Mr. Sir Ramaphosa was an amazing time. Uh, I worked with him for, for 10 years um, and just watching his humility, um, the, the, the hard work ethic that he had, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a lot to be able to learn from him not by listening to the things that he said, but just by watching him, mm. 
you know, watching the way that he would engage, whether he would be talking to someone who is a security at the gate or talking to a board member, it would be the same inter interface, you know, real interest in the person and, you know, and knowing who everyone is. I How mean, has that influenced your leadership style yeah. now as you sit as chief executive of the group? It's, it's been important for me to, to be able to learn from that, um, understanding the importance of being the same person always, of being humble, you know, of, you know, not allowing, you know, your, your role to dictate the person that, that you become, mm. but being the same person that, that you always are. Um, and, you know, that, that humility, I mean, you know, for me, just learning from all of that has, has been very, um, I, I think it's been very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> You've been described yeah. as one of the most influential women in business. You've been described as a young global leader. You've been described as a woman to watch in South Africa. All of these accolades, but let's bring it down mm -hmm. uh, to Putty in her simplistic form. Mm -hmm. What wakes you up in the morning? What keeps you going? What yeah. keeps the engine going? Yeah. You know, I, I feel so fortunate to be able to make a difference, to be able to work with people who are making a difference in other people's lives and to be in an organization such as Shanduka. And I cherish that so much. Um, and, and, and so it, it wakes me up to know that I can be amongst people like that and, you know, a, a people who love what they do, you know, not everyone has that opportunity. Um, and, and I really, I, I, I just cherish that, that, that wakes me up. <laughs> Work-life balance, does it exist uh, yeah. in light of all these accolades as well? Yeah. Uh, how do you manage to keep the seesaw straight? Yeah, that, that is the, the, the area that can be a bit of a, a, a difficulty because, you know, what happens is that you, you just love what you do. And, you know, you, you, sometimes you don't realize that maybe you're spending a bit more time, um, you know, in, in, in work than, than you should. But Are you guilty of spending more time at work than you should on other things? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've been worse in the past. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think I'm, I'm getting better at it. Um, but it's, you know, it, it can get difficult because you love what you do. It, it doesn't feel like work always. Enterprise Development Organization, the Hope Factory, helps to grow small businesses. Earlier I sat down with Hope Factory CEO, Annie McWalter, to talk about the pillars of the organization and hope that they are dishing out. We have, a pro we have a number of programs. We have six programs in total, but the core of all of our programs is mentorship. Mm. So every person that comes onto our program has a full-time mentor, and that's how we grow the person to be able to grow the business. Mm. What value does mentorship then bring into a, a young startup? Mentorship is very key with regards to helping a person guide the, their entrepreneurial journey. So mentors form a guide. They form, sometimes they teach skills, sometimes they are there to coach. Mm. Um, at times just to be a spring, uh, uh, just a soundboard for different ideas. So mentorship is key for growing But do you get a sense entrepreneurs. that entrepreneurs uh, are always aware of this value that you speak about and that they recognize the need to have somebody who's tried and tested that journey guiding them along the way or is it about this is my idea I'm gonna try and see it through I think that a lot of entrepreneurs start out doing it on their own but in time they realize that it's quite a lonely journey mm. quite a tough journey and uh, more often than not they, they tend to look for a mentor and I think when they are open to mentoring then people will show up as their mentors mm. the Hope Factory provides those mentors so our, all our mentors are people who've run their own businesses before mm. so they've walked that journey before let's let's look at that journey of finding a mentor how do you know that you found a good business mentor and how should you be looking in the first place? I think if you you find a good mentor by looking at what you are needing in your business so if there's areas of, of that you don't know enough about 
you can find someone who has very good knowledge in that area. And that is the first step of, of if you are open to learning and, and growing in a particular area, then you will find someone in that. Um, I think it is difficult sometimes to find mentors, people who are willing to, to just give up their time for free. Mm. That's why the Hope Factory has this, this enterprise development organisation um, and it, it has full-time mentors. Mm. How do you structure that relationship so that you're both getting the most out of that mentorship relationship? What we do is um, it's structured around the entrepreneur's goals and purposes and um, they need to look dig, dig deep and say why am I in business because what our whole philosophy is around if you grow that person and grow their vision they will be able to grow their business so that's what we start off with is what are their goals what is their purpose why have they come into this business and then we do do a business analysis and through that you can start to see where there's some strengths and where there's some weaknesses and from there the entrepreneur can set their goals with regards to how they can mm. grow their business and the mentor guides them with regards to that if there's been a absolutely successful um, relationship that you've observed over the years and maybe that's resulted in a successful business. Is there one that comes to mind? Yeah, we've got quite a few and actually quite a few women come, uh, come to mind. We have an a entrepreneur called Puso Fisher who does events and photography. In the first um, six months of her business, her turnover doubled. Um, we also have another entrepreneur who's in a different industry manufacturing, um, the Machao, the drink, and she came to us and and also her turnover uh, grew by 51% and her profits grew by 37%. Mm. So we've seen the actual kind of bottom line increases. But besides that, of the actual figures, we can see people growing on our programs. You made a, a rather important point and you, you mentioned that there are quite a, a number of women who have success stories. Do women fare better in a mentorship relationship than men do? I... I wouldn't be able to say that they maybe fare better. I think that they're possibly a little bit more open to help sometimes. Um, and funny enough, it, it hasn't been specifically that we've recruited for women, but about 65% of our, our entrepreneurs on our programs are women. So maybe that does indicate that women are more seeking for, uh, for mentors. Mm. But um, I think that it, it depends on whether the person's open to it or not. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. Let's take a look at former Miss South Africa and business tycoon Basetsana Kumalo. Basetsana Kumalo turned her beauty queen success into a billable brand. While she was the reigning Miss South Africa back in 1994, she began presenting on lifestyle television show Top Billing. This led to the formation of Tulo Pilo Productions, which Kumalo owns 50% of, with Top Billing remaining the company's flagship brand. Kumalo's newest television venture is the production of popular reality show Our Perfect Wedding that has received raving reviews from South African audiences. The show follows South African couples as they put the final touches to their traditional and Western nuptial ceremonies. She also owns her own clothing label, eyewear range and cosmetics range besides being involved in a number of other businesses. Kumalo is one of South Africa's most recognizable faces and continues to be a force to be reckoned with in the business world. That's all we have time for for this week's episode of Women and Wealth. Remember that we love talking to you, so follow me on Twitter at Nozi Pombandra. And don't forget that our hashtag is WOW410. Let us know who you would like to see on the couch and, of course, who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered.